1.4 zombie cover random sampling. And then we're going to cover two different topics here. One, random sample, just a quick introduction of it about how you take a random sample or what you can use to take a random sample and the reason for it. The other thing is going to be about survey questions. Thinking about how you're wording your questions and how that could affect the answers. Both are ways of on me to control bias. Okay? Now, a random sample, randomness is going to be the best way to control bias. You just need to remember it doesn't get rid of it. Okay? If you're worried about, say, if you're doing a study on memorizing and you randomly assign people into groups, you're going to have people that are good at memorizing, you're going to have people that are bad at memorizing. The randomness, the hope is that it just spreads it all out so it's equal between all your treatment groups. Okay? So for a random sample, you want to be able to take a simple random sample. That is the best type of sample to get, a simple random sample. Okay? And this is when every member of the population has an equal chance of being selected. So no group is left out, no person is left out. Every person has a chance of randomly being picked. Okay? Now, Luckily, it's 2020 now, we're moving further and further along, and with technology, it's getting easier and easier to select randomness. Before we had all this technology, this is what was called a random digit generator. This is a random table of values, and this is what you would use to select numbers. Hey, I would tell you, okay, each person maybe start at a different row, and you would just have to go across and those would be the numbers you would use. If you were looking at all two digit numbers, you would just start selecting, okay, two digit number, two digit number, there's the two digit number and just keep going until you get the values that you're looking for. So if you're looking through the numbers, let's say you need numbers from 50 to 99. Well, if you start going through here, if I tell you, okay, let's start at row six. Well, the first number here is 49. Your first number doesn't even work. You just need to skip over that and keep going. 56, 31. Luckily, and hopefully maybe, this might be the last time you ever have to look at a random number table. Okay, because now we have those beautiful calculators. We can use those calculators to call up random numbers. We can tell the exact range of numbers that we want to look at. And we can use that technology to call up the integers that we're looking for. Now, an unbiased sample, if random samples are centered at the actual parameter value, if you have a sample that is going to be representative of the population, the parameter that you are estimating, that should be the center of your sample. Okay? And all of our samples that we take should get closer and closer to that parameter. Okay? And everything should get close around it. Yes, you might have an outlier here or there, but that might have to just do with just some kind of variability. It might be more spread out. Like I said, you can't be scared of variability. It just might happen sometime that your value is going to be spread out, okay? So unbiased means that your sample is going to start getting close to the parameter that we're estimating. Sampling variability is talking about the difference from sample to sample, okay? There's gonna be times when if there's, it's very consistent, all your samples, if they're all represented in the population, everything's going to be very close to that center, that parameter that we think is going to be our population, the population parameter. There's a chance that none of your points are really that close and it's kind of just all spread out evenly. It's not very consistent. Again, it's not a bad or good thing as long as every sample represents the population. Okay, when we start getting samples that don't represent the population, and that might be what this is showing, it's something you would have to look into if you're running your study, but I can't guarantee anything. It's not a bad or good thing, it's just something that happens. Okay, precision is how much the values vary from sample to sample. So really just saying, okay, if it's a good sample, here's our parameter, how far away are they going to be? Okay, it's kind of just a way of measuring the variability a little bit. And that's gonna be related to sample size. If you're taking a good sample, the larger samples are going to get closer and closer to your parameter, okay? So, as long as, and again, the most important thing, your sample must be representative of your population. Okay? Larger samples equal more accurate estimate of the parameter. Okay? So the larger samples are not be a little more accurate, okay? but I would say having a representative population, having a sample that represents your population does trump having an extremely large sample. Okay? Survey questions. So this is the second part. 
survey can be a useful method of collecting data. Surveys going out asking people questions. You're not really uh, giving them a treatment. You're just going to be asking them questions and getting their opinion on them. Okay? The way you word your question, the environment, how you ask it, those are very important things. So the rest of this section is just going to be looking at what things you need to think about as you're writing your questions. Okay? So the wording of your question. Be careful with often, seldom, and occasionally. Okay? What do these words mean? Okay? They might be different for every person. So if I ask you, have you recently ate in fast food or have you recently bought food from a fast food restaurant? Well, what does recently mean? One person might think recently was today or yesterday. Other people might think recently was within the last week. Okay? So be specific. When you're, if you're asked that question, ask in the last 24 hours, in the last seven days, the last week, have you went to a fast food restaurant to eat? Make sure you're specific on that. Meanings of words. Do you own stock? Okay, well, depending on who you are, you might think stock differently. We have the stock market where you're buying and trading stocks of companies, working on Wall Street. You also have stock, could be another, is another term for owning cattle. Okay, so you have to be careful. Make sure you are being very, be, yeah, that you're making sure your words are what they mean and there's not another way of interpreting what you're saying here. The type of question, okay? Make sure your data that you're going to be collecting is going to be useful, okay? The type of question can help that. Remember, you're not gonna take this data and either put it as a display, as a graph, you're not gonna look at it and analyze uh, the distribution of it. So think about the open or ended question. So here's the same question. How do you feel about broccoli? And how do you feel about broccoli A, B, C, and D? So we have the open-ended question, which how do you feel about broccoli? That might start asking people about, people might start talking about if it's healthy or not for you. People might start talking about the taste. People might start talking about the look, how to cook it. So how do you feel about broccoli? That's going to open you up to a whole range of answers. Okay? If you at least give them small choices here, A, B, C, or D, I know it's not, they're pretty vague. Look at, I like it very much, like it's somewhat dislike it somewhat, dislike it very much. You might not exactly know why, but at least you would know, okay, the group of people I surveyed here, they like broccoli a whole lot. Let's find out why. Then you can go dig in a little deeper, okay? But this is on a narrow down their choices, so it's going to be a little easier for you to analyze the answers that you get. Loaded questions, okay? Watch how you are going to be asking your questions. Do you support stem cell research? Okay. This at times can be a hot topic. Okay. People, some people are very, very much against it. Okay. They see it as just kind of playing with nature a little bit. So people would look at this question and some people would say no without even thinking about it. No, I'm against it. I don't want people to do it at all. Okay. Now if I took this basically the same question, but I add on to it. Do you support stem cell research that cures Alzheimer's disease? Okay. That would be considered a loaded question. Okay, you're still asking, do you support stem cell research? But now with this, to cure Alzheimer's disease, you're kind of steering them in the direction that you want. For you to say no to this question, it kind of makes it almost sound like that you don't care about Alzheimer's disease. It, that's a disease I mean, it affects a whole family when someone does get diagnosed with Alzheimer's and has to go through that. Some people would, might have to change their answer with this. This would be considered a loaded question. Adding a little bit on to it, to make people answer the way you want them to answer. Do you think there should be an amendment to the Constitution prohibiting abortion or shouldn't there be such an amendment? Another question, do you believe there should be an amendment to the Constitution protecting the life of an unborn child or shouldn't there be such an amendment? Okay, so if you're looking at A and B here, which one do you think had more support for that amendment? Okay, do you believe there should be an amendment the Constitution prohibiting abortion? Do you believe there should be an amendment to the Constitution protecting the life of an unborn child? I would think to protect the life of an unborn child, people are going to want that amendment. People are all want to support children in the life of a child. Okay? Look at this. One question got 29%, the other got 50% uh, percent approval. B was the one who got 50% approval. Okay? B was the one that got a little higher, and it's just the wording in it there. 
it's the same question. It's asking about amendment. Okay? An amendment that's on a stop abortion. Okay? One says prohibiting abortion. The other one says life of an unborn child. The way you're wording it's kind of steering people in the direction you want it to be answered. Okay? Interviewer influence. Okay? Be careful of how you ask the question. Be careful of who you are. Be careful of the environment that you're in. Okay? Tone of voice, body language, gender, authority figures, they can all influence the answers. Okay? Police officer asks if you used any illegal drugs in the past year. Well, if the police officer, full uniform, is asking a random person that question, that random person might answer that question a little differently than if just a college student is going up there. It might be for the same study, but the interviewer is going to probably have some kind of effect on how the people answer that question. I would say if a police officer is asking, you're not probably stay away from saying yes a little more. Okay? After a poor meal at a restaurant, the head of the chef, the head chef comes out and asks how you enjoyed the meal. Well, I would think this situation, face to face, you're gonna have a harder time saying you didn't like the meal. It was cooked bad to give it some criticism. Now, if you just get one of those cards and you're just gonna mark down how you thought, it might be a little easier to say this wasn't the best meal, this was a poor meal, okay? Face to face is gonna be a little harder than just getting one of those cards and then leaving it on the table, okay? Confidence versus anonymity, okay? Confidential, this is where the identity is going to be protected. Yes, it is known, okay? It's known by the person doing the evaluation, the study, but it's going to be protected. It's their responsibility to keep your identity protected, to keep your information protected, okay? And amenity, this is where the identity is not known, okay? Yes, they took your information, they took your answers, okay? So they collected data from you, but they don't know who the data belongs to, okay? It's just going to be just that data. So you're going to have to think, if you're gonna use anonymous research, you need to make sure the way you collect it is going to make, keep it anonymous. If you know their identity, that's now confidential. And it's important to give those people part of the study, they need to know which one's going on, okay? Is it confidential or is it anonymous, okay? Because that could affect their answers. Okay, the teacher asks the class to put their heads down and answer questions by raising their hands without looking. Okay, so this is what I have done a lot, having kids put their heads down. I know who they are, I know who's answering that question, I know how they answer that question, but I'm going to keep that safe. I'm not going to let people know, okay, whoever answered this question to vote for the test today rather than tomorrow, I'm not letting the rest of the class know that. It's my responsibility to keep that child, their identity protected. Okay, you're taking part of a taste test on which you like better, Coke or Pepsi. You are then given a small sample of each drink. As you leave, you are handed a sheet of paper and you record which you like better. You put your paper in a box that is locked until after the study. Well, this one here, they're just gonna have that box and they're gonna have all the answers. Bunch of slips of paper that say Coke or Pepsi, which one they like better. There's real no way of them knowing who put which paper in there. Okay, so as long as they don't know that, that's gonna be, you're anonymous. You don't know, they don't know, so everything's safe. And that's probably usually, anonymous is usually a little safer one. Okay, that's going to be the one where you don't have to worry about them spreading your information. Okay? So make sure you can know the difference between anonymous and confidential. Okay? Think about how your questions are worded for surveys, loaded questions, the environment that you're asking the questions in, giving the survey in, the person asking the questions. And remember, randomness controls bias. It does not get rid of bias, but it controls it. It spreads it out throughout all your treatment groups, throughout your whole study, so it's going to be as equal as possible. Okay, so that's it for 1.4.